Okay. So um, I'm the last speaker, so it's a tough work to keep you alive to the end. So I will present you more, uh, quickly. I'm Aaron Velu. I'm working for Innovance, which is a company w a which aims at uh, making uh, open source cloud stuff, mostly on OpenStack. But I'm not here for speaking about that. I'm also uh, part uh, of the SysLinux project. And for the second time, I'm presenting my stuff to this assembly. I'm very proud about it because I have many friends in it, and I'm kind of proud to show you my work. So last year, I've been presenting HDT, which is um, an open source tool which is linked to SysLinux to show you what your hardware is, but at the bootloader, the bootloader time, sorry. And I had many questions is, does HDT is able to perform a boot action regarding some hardware specification? And the answer is no. So ca ca can we make it? If we want to make it, we have to tweak the bootloader, meaning we have to detect all the hardware capabilities on features of your system to then take a decision on how to boot your system. Uh, so we have to make a link between a particular hardware ability and a boot entry or a boot option to your system. So at my taste, is there anyone that want to do that on Grub2? <coughs> Grub2, uh, at my taste, is pre pretty scary. So I'm mostly part of the SysLinux project. And I've been contributing many libraries inside SysLinux, so the bootloader, to add hardware detection. So I'm able to do the CPU ID detection to get the CPU flag or maybe the CPU name. I'm able to pass the memory uh, information the PCI buses to pass what device is locally, physically present on my system. I'm able also to pass the DMI, as Boris uh, speak about late uh, previously. So I'm able to know if I'm running uh, maybe on a Dell 2960. Six, yes, 60. I'm also able to pass the SAPI tables. So in SAPI tables, you have many, many information about the number of cores you have on your system the number of physical sockets you have, so we will be able to extract this information. And we are also able to get the visa information, so to get the screen size that the visa BIOS is offering to the kernel, typically for adjusting the resolution of your kernel at booting time. And all this stuff is available in SysLinux since 2009. So all this stuff is basically the libraries that Sys SysLinux owns in um, in itself, and now the question is, how can I use it to make a custom booting? There is two main options to make it. We can use the statically version of the COM32 modules. So a COM32 modules is an extension of the bootloader. When SysLinux is loading, it is able to load additional modules that will perform a specific task. COM32 modules are running, um, developed in C code. So you are making a, re a regular C code when you can have just to call the libraries, take the information you want from the return of these calls, and take a decision of what to boot. And that will be uh, the example I will show you. And this approach is implemented in if CPU. The other option is to use Lua scripts because we have a COM32 module which implements the Lua scripting language. And if you are writing scripts using the Lua language, you will be able to define your boot pass. So I will show you how it looks like uh, the SysLinux configuration file if you are using if CPU. So in this example, I think there's a laser here, a beamer. Yes, switch it on, and that's it. So this is a, a regular SysLinux configuration file. So I've been defining an entry, a boot entry, which is called uh, IFCPU, which loads the IFCPU.C32. So this is provided by SysLinux. And then I'm adding to this module some parameters. The first parameter is the CPU feature I want to match. 
So here you have a list of the kind of CPU features you can use. Typically, does your system is a 64-bit capable system? In fact, we are using, we are searching the LM flag from your CPU. Does your ad system is able to uh, run uh, hardware-assisted uh, virtualization? Does your system is able to get the PAA extension? Do, do you have multi-core or SMP systems? And are we running under an hypervisor? You can take one of those information, put it as a CPU features, and then if it's uh, through, you can get to this boot entry, if it's false, to this one. In each boot entry, you will be able to define exactly the kind of booting you want. So typically, you can tell if I'm running a 64-bit system, I will boot a 64-bit kernel, unless I will boot a 32 one. When the system is booting, you don't have any action to perform on your system, and your system will detect the hardware and choose the best entry regarding your need. The other option is to use the Lua scripting. When using the Lua scripting, I'm just calling the Lua COM32 module, so the extension of SysLinux, and append it a script. This script will be responsible of making the decision of what to do for booting. Here come what does the script.lua look like. So I'm looking for all the syslinux configuration directory, and I'm requiring another module, another um, Lua module, which is called hypervisor. By default, my append is empty. I want to append to my, to my um, VMLinux append something that has been done by detect hypervisor, and then choose a VMLinux file set up an initiate file and call the kernel with the initiate with the append defined by detect hypervisor. <coughs> How does look like the hypervisor.lua? In fact, I'm getting the CPU flag and by doing this, SysLinux does have a binding between the Lua scripting and the library I've been implementing in C directly in SysLinux. So calling cpu.cpu.flags make all the CPU ID calls in C directly on the processor and provide you back a structure where all the flags are present. And then, it's pretty obvious, if inside my CPU, my CPU flags I do have one flag which is called hypervisor, then I'm doing something, let's say in my example, um, requesting using only one CPU even if there are more CPU defined by the virtualizer. It's just stupid. It's just to show you that you can make a decision. It could be reducing the frequency of the scheduler. It could be anything you want. Unless you do something else. And then you return the append uh, string you wanted to put on your kernel. Uh, the point is, uh, maybe you don't know that, but when you are running under an hypervisor like KVM, for example, or QEMU, uh, the hypervisor is adding one more CPU flag to your physical uh, CPU, which is called hypervisor, and this is what, what here I'm trying to detect. For example, VirtualBox is not playing the same, they are not playing fairly, and they don't expose the hypervisor flag, so we, this option will not work under VirtualBox. So, enough slide. Uh, I will just make you now a real example of what uh, uh, I was speaking about. So I've been preparing some uh, directories. So the first one I will show you the Hive CPU uh, case. So the, uh, as I show you uh, just before, I've been implementing using Hive CPU the detection of the 64-bit capabilities of my system. And regarding if it's really 64-bit capable, I will boot, boot sorry, a damn small Linux version 4.4.10. If it's a 32 one, I will bo boot a tiny core uh, ISO. Now, I will make two calls. So this is the internal of my stupid scripting. 
I will launch first one time the KVM by booting locally by faking a CPU which is a Pentium 3, which is a 32 bit processor. And I will launch exactly the same command line, except I'm faking an ALM processor, which is 64 bit capable. So I will run my script. It will launch twice the same VM just by changing the CPU. In the first case, it should start the dumb, the, uh, dumb small Linux. In the second time, it should boot uh, a tiny core system. So I'm starting my script. First booting, so in 32-bit system, it's loading the CPU core, the tiny core, because my processor is not 64-bit capable. I'm entering from this image the bootloader. I can boot it. And that's it. We are seeing that we are booting now the tiny core. I will quit my window, and then my script will ex immediately start the same VM but by faking the NLM. So here we can see we are now in NLM, and now we are obviously loading the DSL, the dumb small Linux operating system. So just by having an action on the CPU device, I've been an action on my default booting without any, intervention, without any manual intervention for myself. So regarding your need, you can automize everything you want to make to the decision of what system to boot. So this example is very simple, but you can make something much more interesting. For example, you can, based on the DMI information, telling if my server is uh, an HP 360 Gen 8 with a BIOS, which is version 1.0, I should boot something, which could be the program that updates the BIOS. So at the boot time, it will detect your platform on the BIOS version, takes the action to boot a particular device, which is an upgradable um, firmware that I've been providing by your manufacturer. At the second boot, as the BIOS property will be not matching the, your rule, nothing will be done on your server. So it's a way to optimize um, upgrading, for example, of your BIOSes or firmware on one system. Now I will show you the other case using your Lua scripting. So here we see that I'm only loading the Lua script. And the Lua script is only trying to do the detection of the hypervisor. And if I'm virtualized, I'm able to boot the core.gz. And core.gz is a uh, tiny core system. This time, my script is launching KVM using the Lua directory, but by requesting two CPUs. And if you remember, I've been telling that if I'm running under an hypervisor, I'm telling the CPU only to use one CPU. So it will be a way to show you that even if the hypervisor is showing me something, by detection of the hypervisor, um, the hypervisor presence, I'm choosing to ignore one of the two CPU. So my VM is booting with two CPUs. And here, I'm booting now with NRCPU equal one, because the hypervisor got detected by my Lua scripting. And now the Tiny core is booting, and I will show you from inside the VM that by looking at slash, slash proc CPU info, I've obviously only one CPU visible from uh, the virtual machine. <coughs> so this is the first processor, and the one then after. So I've obviously one processor, and so my Lua scripting was able to trick my uh, boot uh, parameters. So if I'm watching 
at slash proc cmd align. Oops, sorry. Here we can see that the command line of the kernel have been overloaded with nrcp equal one thanks to my bootloader. So this is just to show you that many people are using custom kernels for adding some specific parameters to ensure that every time they are booting their kernel on their hardware, it will work ac as expected. But this approach shows you that, that you, if you know your hardware, you can use the bootloader to choose what parameter to append automatically to your kernel. And this way, you are just using the stock kernel that your provider or your Linux distribution is giving to you without uh, any particular patches. It's only a matter of the bootloader to do a clever thing based on the hardware property of your system. So my presentation uh, is over. Uh, and maybe we'll take some question or some discussion, if you like, around uh, this stuff. I'm a little bit in advance. So you can find me on IRC, on Twitter, on uh, by email, of course. So if you have some question or some discussion about this topic, I would be happy. Um, is it uh, still possible to uh, force uh, which uh, boot image uh, you want and all the parameters? Everything you want. Okay. In my case, in my latest case, uh, I can show you here on the Lua scripting. The most interesting thing here is my Lua script decided to load this VM Linux or this uh, initRD. So you can have exactly the precise definition of what can an initRD and append to choose. But you have also the other approach of predefining boot entries on a request to boot one or the other. Ah, yeah. uh, in fact, uh, it was not my question. It was not precise. I mean by hand. Uh, for example, you gave the example of a uh, uh, system which uh, boots uh, just to up upgrade the BIOS and which reboots afterwards. Uh, let's imagine, for example, that uh, the, the BIOS is uh, protected against uh, writing uh, mm -hmm. because a jumper on the motherboard or whatever. And uh, I would not want to see the, um, the system uh, boot over and over and try to update uh, endlessly. And I would like to uh, be able to take over the boot process by hand and uh, force it to, uh, to, boot to process with the normal boot, for example. Um, I the way I would do it, since Linux is not able to maintain this uh, p this parameter uh, against two boots because you don't have a place to store information that it okay. was uh, booted twice. But on some system using IPMI, you are able to tell your server boot once on the network and then on the local device. So if the network booting using this technique is failing, mm -hmm. it will get to something else. So it may be a trick to do on the server rather than on the okay, system but side. For example, uh, could I, by uh, just uh, pressing escape uh, at the boot, uh, stop the execution? Sure. Of the ah, okay. Sure. So in SysLinux, you can do anything you want you wi within the user interaction. Typically speaking, in Lua or in the COM32 systems, you have a regular access to uh, the command okay. to the interface, so you can make a ask yes okay. the user to press space to enter this mode or unless it will boot locally okay so that's perfect so you can make it okay thank you well, what about using uh, linux uh, a very small linux kernel which you always boot and have a very small init that decide which second linux kernel to k exec Instead of doing it uh, in the bootloader, do it in a very small first stage uh, system, which is running Linux and has access to all the Linux drivers, yes. rather than record everything in the bootloader. My answer is my example. In my case, 
I'm able to boot an ISO directly from using Memdisk. If you are already booted under Linux, you are not able to boot another operating system because you're stuck inside Linux. At my point, I'm directly at the bootloader time, so I can boot anything. It could be a Windows, it could be a Linux, it could be an ISO, it could boot whatever you want. Or you can use key exec to switch to another uh, kernel or another operating system from within Linux. Um, but how do you boot an ISO from Linux? I don't know myself how Good to do point. it. <laughs> so my point is, by staying at the bootloader time, the amount of detection to make for detecting a CPU or a DMI information is not that big. It's, I've been stable for years, giving a CPU, DMI information. They don't, there is new version of DMI, but the DMI information that you are looking for is available for years. The brand, the version, the build version, we know it for ages. And so, uh, be doing it at the bootloader time offer many options to boot. It could be really booting uh, using HTTP uh, or a, a SAN system to boot a Windows from remotely. It could be booting a BIOS upgrade which is run under uh, MS-DOS. I don't know. So, at making this choice, it's offer me much more information to make a decision. I have two questions. Uh, the first one is uh, you, you described a lot of hardware information that you have in uh, libraries inside SysLinux. Yes. Is uh, all of this information accessible from Lua scripts? Not all of them because uh, honestly Lua is not very used. Maybe uh, mostly uh, because m people don't know it. Uh, I was looking into it at some time, and I found uh, there is little documentation. So there is few documentation, but the binding is very quick to make it. So if you need one, feel free to ping me, and I will make it. It's very easy to make it. Lua is made for that. So we have the structures. In s we have the C structures inside this Linux, and it's very easy for Lua to get them and to expose them. So it's just a matter of making them. Very few people are exposed interest to this kind of stuff. If you are interested, it's very easy to make it. Really. Okay, and my second question, uh, do you have any inside information about uh, EFI support in SysLinux? EFI support is coming in SysLinux 6. Matt is currently doing the release. Where the first release I've been done uh, a few, it was during the summer, I think, and it's not yet stable, to be honest, but the release process is done. The proof of concept is done. It's now a matter of fixing between the initial implementation from Matt, which is working for Intel, which is really an EFI guy. It's uh, very focused on this stuff, depending less of uh, SysLinux. This guy is made for U UEFI. And so we expect SysLinux in the incoming release to be stable on UEFI. So you will have it. Uh, but I cannot tell you that this stuff is working on UEFI. I never tested it. So I hope so. But I don't know the today's effect on it. Okay. If you have a compatibility module, a CSM, I think it will work because all my work is low-level stuff, so I'm requesting many low-level information from the BIOS, for example, or for the physical device. I don't know if this <laughs> low-level calls will work on your UEFI. If not, I will have to adapt many collection, uh, hardware collection uh, techniques, maybe based on UEFI information. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Thank you guys.